Story recap here. Today I'm going to explain an adventure, sci-fi and fantasy movie called City of Ember. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. A group of architects, engineers and scientists gather secretly to save humanity. The world is ending and the only way to ensure the future of humanity is to build an underground city powered by a generator. One of the scientists places a paper document and a clear transparent card inside a metal box. Then, the others set the box to 200 years, which they claim is long enough for the remaining humans to live underground. After this, they hand the box to the first mayor, who will then pass it to her successor. As the years pass, the box is handed from mayor to mayor. Nobody knows the secrets that it holds, only that it would open when it's needed most. However, with 47 years remaining, the mayor dies without a successor, and the box is long forgotten. Years count down, and the box remains tucked in the dark until it clicks open. In the underground city of Ember, Dune Harrow prepares for his assignment day. Before he leaves, his father, Loris, enters the room to congratulate him. However, the power suddenly goes out, and Dune worries that Ember's generator will soon fail. This is why it has been his life's goal to work on it. Elsewhere, Lena Mayfleet rushes to attend the same ceremony. Although she's late, she manages to sneak into the class to recite the Oath of Loyalty. Afterward, Mayor Cole tasks the graduates with picking a piece of paper from a bag. Whatever paper they pick will determine their jobs for the rest of their lives. When it's her turn, Lena picks a piece of paper and gets assigned as a pipework laborer, which doesn't appeal to her. Meanwhile, Dune gets assigned as a messenger, which greatly disappoints him. After the ceremony, Dune pleads with Lena to switch jobs with him, refusing to be a messenger. This delights Lena, and she accepts his offer. Later, Lena goes home to announce the good news to her grandmother and little sister, Poppy. Meanwhile, Dune receives a peculiar device that Loris made him as a gift. However, he wants Dune to figure out what the device does. He reminds Dune to pay attention to everything he sees in his job and to make use of the things he discovers. As he explains this, he uses his inventions to get his point across. However, Dune is barely amused and leaves the house to get some fresh air. Outside, he finds a large bug and pets it. Meanwhile, Lena puts her little sister to bed. As she lulls Poppy to sleep, Lena uses a set of pedals to power an answering machine that allows her to listen to her late father's voice. Along with her father's message is one from someone named Barrow, who said he has to look after his son and has changed his mind. After Poppy falls asleep, Lena draws a picture with a blue sky, yearning for the world beyond Ember. The following day, Lena enthusiastically reports to her job. There, she receives a red coat, which is the messenger's uniform. She also impresses the boss by reciting the rules for the job. Meanwhile, Dune attends his first day on the job, where Sul gives him his equipment, reminding the young man to carve his name on his helmet. He claims that it's the only way to identify him in case he dies on the job. As he carves his name, Dune mentions that he believes he can fix the generator, so he asks Sol when he can see it. To his surprise, however, Sol has fallen asleep. Elsewhere, Lena delivers a message to a family friend named Clary, who works at the greenhouse. Suddenly, they hear a scream from outside, so they check and witness a man getting arrested for trying to flee Ember. As the guards take him away, the man hysterically speaks about a monster that grabbed him by the river. Lena wonders why anyone would risk leaving the city, but Clary tells her not to stress about it. Once she is alone, Lena notices an animal horn. Thinking that it belongs to the arrested man, she quickly hides it in her coat and runs away. At the pipes, Dune finally begins to work with Sol, which mainly involves patching up the pipes. He tries to bring up the problem with the generator again, but the old man stops him. Dune then asks about the tunnels, so Sol points out that he has a map to avoid getting lost. Because of this, he sneakily takes the map as soon as the old man falls asleep, hoping it'd lead him to the generator. With the map's help, Dune cruises through the tunnels. He finds that one of the tunnels has been erased from the map, so he curiously follows that path which leads him to the supply room. There, a man named Looper finds him and tosses him into the streets. After being humiliated publicly, Dune goes on his way. However, the power suddenly goes out, plunging the whole city into darkness. Meanwhile, Lena happens to be on the same street as Dune, and they find safety in each other's presence. As they remain in the dark, they hear noises from the generator, acknowledging that something must be done. Thinking this, Lena tells Dune about the arrested man who came from the unknown regions, wondering if it's possible to leave Ember. Before Dune can respond, the power returns, and an announcement summons all pipe workers. Before he leaves, Lena shows him the animal horn, which Dune recognizes is from a beetle. 
Dune asks to keep it, and Lena agrees. Suddenly, a woman asks Lena to send a message to everyone. As Lena makes her way to her house, she announces on the streets that the power outage lasted for seven minutes, which is twice longer than they've ever had. Meanwhile, Dune heads to the generator and finds it on fire. Workers are trying to put the flames out but struggle to do so. In Lena's house, her grandmother looks for something important that she can't remember. However, Lena is more focused on ensuring everyone's safety, so she quickly looks for Poppy. She finds her in the closet with a metal box, so Lena takes the little girl out, carrying the box with her. Suddenly, her grandmother recognizes the metal box, claiming that it was from her great-grandfather, but she can no longer remember what it was for. Thinking it's irrelevant, Lena goes back to work. Later on, Looper hires Lena to tell the mayor that his ship is in. Lena heads to the city hall to deliver her message. As the guard, Barton, leads her to the mayor's office, she sees the portraits of the past mayors, claiming that she's related to Pod Morthwart, the seventh mayor. As Lena stares at the portrait, she notices the same metal box in her great-grandfather's hands. She finally sees the mayor, but he makes fun of her last name, saying that it matches her job. The mayor asks her what her message is, and when she says it's from Looper, Cole beckons her to come closer to give the message privately. As she walks to him, she notices that the mayor is hoarding some goods in his drawers. After completing her job, she asks the mayor what the metal boxes and the portraits are. However, she simply gets dismissed. As she continues her day, she overhears Looper telling someone that it's going black for good. However, he tells her that he meant it's going back for good instead. Meanwhile, Dune goes home to research the horn that Lena found. He finds a picture of a beetle with the same horn but can't explain how it grew to be that big. Loris, however, tells him not to mind it. Back at Lena's house, she opens the metal box and discovers pieces of paper inside. She tries to put them together, but a part is missing, and some letters were erased due to time. She also finds a transparent card in the box's compartment. Lena shows a card to her friend Lizzie, who's too busy with customers at the store as they're running out of supplies. When she comes home later, Lena discovers that her grandmother's health is deteriorating. Her grandmother asks her if she found it, and Lena says that she did. She asks the woman what it is, but the doctor advises her to let her grandmother rest. The doctor also checks on Poppy since she's coughing, only to find that the child swallowed a piece of paper, which is the missing piece from the box. The power goes out again, and when it returns, Lena discovers that her grandmother has passed away. Left with no other relatives, Lena and Poppy soon move in with Mrs. Murdo, a chorister. Lena grieves for her loss but is more determined to unlock the box's secrets. For this matter, she assembles the paper pieces and consults Dune about her discovery. Noticing the printing, Dune breaks into their old school to find a history book written by the city's builders. Upon seeing the writing, Lena discovers that they were printed the same way, so the documents must have come from the builders too. Suddenly, the guard appears, so the two escape. Later on, Dune finds the word exit in the document, leading him to conclude that there's an exit in Ember. Because of this, they head to the pipes where Dune found the erased tunnel in Sol's map. This leads them to a locked room labeled 351. However, as Dune tries to open it, two men appear. The men suddenly drop their things upon finding a monster walking toward them. When the coast is clear, Dune and Lena check what happened and discover that the men were carrying cans of food. Just then, they find the monster, which is a giant star-nosed mole. The creature chases them into the supply room and nearly kills Lena. However, Dune jumps into the rescue, and they make their way back to the pipes. While resting, Lena notices her last name carved into Dune's helmet. Dune claims that the former owner drowned, but Lena knows that there's not enough water in the pipes that could have possibly killed her father. She later visits Clary to tell her this, and the woman tells her the truth about her father's death. Clary takes her to a secret room, where she tells Lena that her father believed there was a way out of Ember. He dug a tunnel to escape, but it flooded and he drowned. Hearing this, Lena decides to hand the box to the mayor and let him handle things instead. The next day, the mayor announces that he'll create a group that'll investigate the blackouts. Although Lena is in the crowd, she decides not to trust Cole for now. After that, Lena sees Lizzie in the streets and discovers that she's carrying food that hasn't been available in years. Lizzie claims that it's from her boyfriend who works in the storerooms. However, it turns out that her boyfriend is Looper. Because of this, Lena runs to Dune and tells him that Looper was one of the men they saw at the pipes, and he might be linked to the mayor in room 351. This urges them to break into the said room, and upon entering, they find it full of goods while the mayor is there, asleep after binge eating. 
After their shocking discovery, they both head to Lena's house, discussing how Cole found his own solution to the blackouts. As Lena puts Poppy to sleep, she asks Dune to run the pedals to the answering machine. However, he recognizes Barrow's voice from the recordings and quickly leaves. Dune heads home and confronts Loris, accusing him of trying to flee Ember with the Mayfleets. Loris doesn't deny this, but he claims that they were wrong. However, Dune remains determined to find a way out and tells his father that there's an exit in the pipes. To prove it, he reveals that they found the Builder's instructions, so Loris demands to see them. The next day, the city gets ready for the great day of the singing event. At the same time, Lena reports the mayor's secrets to Barton, hoping that he can help. However, this leads him to take her forcefully to the mayor's office. There, Cole denies all the allegations while Lena notices him pocketing another transparent card. He sees the metal box in Lena's hands and demands to have it, insisting that it belongs to the city mayor. Suddenly, a blackout occurs, allowing Lena to grab the mayor's card before bursting out the window. Because of this, guards are sent to arrest Lena and Dune. At their house, Loris stalls the guards while hinting for his son to run with the device he gave him. As Dune escapes, Lena runs to Clary's greenhouse and hides in the secret room. Soon, the guards storm the greenhouse but don't find Lena. Noticing Dune climbing down from the ceiling, Clary distracts Barton, who threatens to arrest her. As the adults talk, Lena finds Dune and takes him into the secret room. There, Dune discovers a vehicle, recognizing that his father made it. Lena gets confused, but Dune explains that Barrow is his father's nickname, proving that their fathers once tried to escape Ember together. Dune urges Lena to escape the greenhouse using the vehicle, so after some intense pedaling, they arrive at a dump site. There, Lena hands Cole's transparent card to Dune. He combines it with a card from the box, turning it into a key where they see the logo from the generator. Before going to the generator, Lena remembers Poppy. Refusing to leave without her, they immediately head to the city square to take Poppy. Afterward, they immediately go to the pipe's control room, where Saul sleeps. They try to ask him how to open the door to the generator, but he doesn't know. Just then, Lena notices the floor and realizes that the map on the document is drawn on it. Comparing the place to the map, she points out that there's something behind the lockers, so Dune immediately tries to find it. As he pulls one of the lockers, he discovers a narrow hall filled with more lockers inside. Noticing the sign behind the fallen locker, they realize that they are actually boats. Lena confirms this upon reading the document, which also mentions rotating something clockwise to release the mechanism. Following this, they turn a nearby lever, which triggers a mechanism that carries the boat into a conveyor belt, leading it into the water. However, the water level is too low, and the boat gets crushed by the water wheel. Seeing this, Lena realizes that they have to follow the exact procedure in the document. She reads it again and finds that they need to access a certain room. Dune looks around and finds the generator logo in a control room nearby. Dune combines the two transparent cards and inserts them into the keyhole. The door won't open at first, but it finally does when Poppy takes the key out. The three arrive at the control center, where they use the key to control the two water wheels according to the instructions. However, the sudden pressure makes the wheels go haywire, alerting Sol. He immediately tries to fix it despite the danger. Seeing this, Dune climbs down to help him enhance Sol as father's device, which turns out to be a tool for Sol to crank up the gears and the water wheels. After some tinkering, they finally get the wheels running. Meanwhile, the town square gets flooded, and the mayor immediately backs away in fear. Back at the wheels, Dune pleads with Sol to escape with them. However, someone needs to keep the wheels open, so Sol urges him to go without him. With no other choice, Dune, Lena, and Poppy hop on another boat. The water level is still low, but Saul cranks up the lever, releasing a tidal wave that carries the boat over the wheel. Elsewhere, the mayor heads to room 351 and finds Looper heading there too. However, Cole decides not to share his stash anymore, so he pushes Looper away. The man tries to stop him, but the mayor manages to enter the room and lock himself inside. Upon opening the lights in the room, however, the giant star-nosed mole welcomes him with its horrifying mouth. Meanwhile, Dune, Lena, and Poppy are swiftly carried through a series of tunnels. The intense waters soon carry them to a calm lake, which then leads to the docks. Before the stairs, Dune finds a box that contains some candles, so he lights them up. The group then climb the stairs until they reach a room. From there, they feel the cool breeze and follow it into the outside world. As soon as they get out, however, they're greeted by darkness. For a second, they begin to question the choices they made. 
Still, they explore the area and take some time to rest. Soon, however, the sun rises, revealing lush vegetation and a thriving ecosystem. They also see the bug that Dune once petted in the town square. It flies into a hole. And from there, they see ember glowing from down below. Knowing that they need to free their people, they tie a message on a piece of rock and drop it into the city. As if struck by fate, the rock reaches Loris, giving the people of Ember a chance to once again bask in the Earth's air and light. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.